Hey, what's up everyone? This is Minnesota Mike back with you for another video. This is another one in my vlog series that I do through the Memphis Songwriters Association in conjunction with the blog that I write for them talking all about songwriting and what has worked for various artists over the course of a handful of years, whether those songs have been hits or not. So this latest kick that I'm on is talking about types of narration. Uh, so just before we dive in, I do want to uh, talk about how I came to this. In my Spanish literature class, we talked about just this, types of narration. And while I told my work that I'm getting my master's degree to be able to teach dual enrollment, the real reason, of course, is so that I can bring you guys better blogs and vlogs. In this one, we'll chat about three different types of narrations, first person, third person, and third person omniscient narration. First, we're gonna start off with first person narration by looking at Skyway by The Replacements. Before we break down this song, I wanna to apologize to uh, Paul Westerberg, who's definitely reading this and watching this particular vlog, that it took me this long to include a Replacements song in one of my blogs. As a fellow Minnesotan, I know Paul as a legendary songwriter, but sometimes it takes sitting down and really listening to the lyrics to realize what an absolute treasure he is. Fun fact about this song's parent album, Please to Meet Me, it was recorded at Arden Studios in Memphis and got its name when band member Tommy Stinson went around to label execs saying, please to meet me, please to meet me, because he was just that much of a goofball and egomaniac. Uh, there was also a guy that uh, works at Arden uh, and, or at least did at one point, and told a friend of mine, hey, uh, this is where Tommy Stinson threw up during the recording session. Uh, so a lot of great replacements history with Arden. Uh, but lyrically, the biggest thing to look out for in a first-person narrative is the use of I and you while telling a story. To me, this one is one of the most common, if not the most common, way of narrating a song, and yet when I actually sat down to think about it, I really needed to contemplate a song that used it. Uh, as always, my goal is for you to be more intentional about why you're using this type of narration, and in the context of a breakup song like this, it's sometimes heavier to say you, yeah, I'm talking to you, rather than saying he or she, although that can work just as well. In Skyway, the narrator talks about an ex-love interest who takes the Skyway when she walks. We've looked at many different types of breakup songs in this particular blog, uh, whatever the topic might be, the larger topic, but most of them paint a picture of uh, someone who is clearly in the wrong and uh, that's not the narrator. This time he arrives at this point, but in a very cleverly disguised way. The Skyway represents the moral high ground she thinks she has by leaving the relationship. He contrasts how uh, he gets around with the subway, which he is forced to take, and references the bums who hang out by the subway, and says that uh, he sleeps underneath the Skyway, which is warmer, but still feels like his world is cold, knowing that uh, the cushy life she leads uh, is a result of her taking the Skyway. The final kicker is when uh, he sees her walking down that little one-way. While the narrator is finally up in the Skyway, she's down on the street, and although the street was previously seen as lowly, it's now a good place since she's there. So it was never truly about where she was, but rather the fact that she is now with him, and he kind of takes the blame for that. Uh, melodically, the song is written in F major with the capo on the third fret. The uh, intro uses the uh, F chord and the G major 7, which is the 1 and the 5 major 7 chords. That gets played twice, and uh, the verse then kicks in starting with the D and that G major 7. That is uh, played twice, followed by the uh, E minor and A7. That's going to be the uh, 7 chord and the uh, 3 chord. That gets played twice before ending on the D, which is the 5 chord. The last verse, however, goes back to the D and that G major 7 pattern for the last two lines. Before the third verse, there's an instrumental interlude which uses the chords E minor, E flat, A7, and G major 7, which is the 7, the flat 7th, the, uh, and then the uh, five major 7 chords. The song contains electric guitar, six string bass, and uh, that actually, that six string was played by Westerberg as opposed to Tommy Stinson, 
who normally played bass on, in the group, as well as drums and vibraphone uh, played by Memphis's own Jim Dickinson, who also produced the record. Structurally, the song uses all verses, of which there are three. Since uh, this is a straight story uh, with all of the crucial things in the song, coming back to the titular Skyway, having just verses is not only a great choice narratively, it's also a great choice for the character. All he can focus on is this woman and the Skyway. Even a bridge would have been out of character for the narrator, ironically given the fact that a Skyway acts as a bridge between buildings. And the nail in the coffin comes effectively in the last verse, even though uh, it's the same cadence as the others. So you can listen to Skyway. It is uh, linked below. Uh, next time, we are going to continue in our next video talking about uh, first-person narrative and talking about If You Could Read My Mind by the late, great Gordon Lightfoot. Make sure you st stay tuned for that. Uh, check out all of my other vlogs on my YouTube channel as well as the blog on the Memphis Songwriters Association website. Once again, I'm Minnesota Mike. Thank you so much.